Hey guys, thanks for getting on the Level Up call on Thursday, 12.30. Um, today, we have the honor and privilege of having Ms. Mariz, Mar oh, Mar Marissa Mazzotti on here. And she's with um, FFL Domination, and that is absolutely what they've been doing is just dominating. They've been growing like super quick. Um, so we're going to kind of dive into her business. Uh, I encourage all you guys to get um, pen and paper out because this is going to be a good one. Let's take down some notes. Let's make this a constructive call. And let's take what we learned today and implement it into our business. Because if we don't do that, it's all for naught, right? So how are you doing, Marissa? I'm doing good. And again, thank you so much for having me on. It's it's my honor and I'm excited. Absolutely. I'm, I'm fired up too. So... Um, so first off, just what, what is your background? What were you doing before you came in and found Family First Life? So I actually have no um, insurance background or sales background at all. So I've been here about two years. And I um, before that, I was doing medical transportation and logistics for um, like organ donation, organ uh, donor network. So people who get organ transplants. So very, very different, um, different fields. So I was there for about three and a half years. Um, I actually really loved it. Learned about this opportunity on social media. And, you know, thought it was way too good to be true and the whole thing. And I thought no chance. Um, I was also, you know, I was working, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week and then bartending on the weekends um, as well as going back to get my master's degree. And I saw this opportunity and I was like, that just doesn't seem like it can be real. So I kind of gave it a shot, got my license in order to kind of like almost disprove the system. And then three weeks in, I was like, okay, this is, this is legit. <laughs> I was about to say, did you find out that it was real? I found out very quickly. <laughs> awesome. So it sounds like you had, uh, you call, you have a servant's heart anyway. So, I mean, you, you fit in perfect with this, with this, because you were already doing something that you were serving people mm -hmm. and trying to help people out and, and, and make their life better. Right. So it was just kind of a natural fit for you whenever you came over to this and started, found out that you could serve way more people by helping agents and, and, and selling. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. Are you still in the field? So I'm still in the field, but very part-time. If we have okay. a, you know, if whatever I'm doing is not productive, I'm going back in the field. And if, if we're growing and doing good on the, on the, the management recruiting side, then, you know, I kind of stick to that, but I'm, I'm very learned very quickly that, you know, you, you lead from the front and you, you are in the trenches with your team. And if you're not effective out of the field, then you better be in the field. Absolutely. It's this, uh, what from the field integrity, right? Yep, exactly. There's a reason why people do that. Cause like people are not going to follow somebody that tells them to do things that they're not currently doing or they haven't done. Yep. Right. I've, I've seen a lot of people try to go, you need to do this while I do this. You know what I mean? And it doesn't work. And, and speaking on that, like, how are you guys replicating what y'all do? You, you know what I mean? Because like you guys are growing at such a fast pace like how are, what kind of system are y'all using to replicate to where you can just plug and play brand new people with no experience in and have them getting out to the phenomenal start that you're having people? So, and I, I think that's a good question. I think the biggest thing, and it's changed a little bit from when I started is, is just being really, really hands-on. So what I, what happened honestly, and, and everyone's different, right? So when I got my mm -hmm. license, um, I came in, they were like, buy leads, get leads, and then, and then call the leads and then go out and see the families. And for me, I was very like, okay, like I was like, sounds good. So I did that. I just was a sponge. I got the leads. I called the leads, went out and saw them. When I got there, called my manager in the home, just like we do. Um, and, and so for me, being able to work independently like that was very easy for me. What I realized though, is that's not necessarily easy for everybody. So you have to understand that not everyone is going to work like you work. So I would say the biggest change um, that we've made in order to be able to grow and get agents moving a lot quicker is being very, very hands-on, um, trying to do a lot of stuff with brand new agents. And even like today, guys, like I'm in the bedroom, there's 12, we have 12 brand new agents here in Dallas that are all, uh, all we're all at an Airbnb dialing for people who've never dialed before. So, so you actually getting out, getting in front of people 
Um, mm-hmm. All of our managers, you know, our managers dial on live dials every single day. Um, we're on one-on-one strategy calls with new agents and just doing as much as we possibly can. And, you know, there's that level of like handholding versus like empowering them to do it. And we try to stay in the empowerment, in the empowerment stage. But if you've never done this before, um, as a new agent has it, especially if they don't have any sales or insurance experience, the whole, Hey guys, go get the leads and call them is, is it didn't work for us. We, we had to get way more, you know, in, in person as much as we can on zoom, asking everyone to have their cameras on doing those strategy calls. I'm buying leads with the agent. So I'm sharing my screen, you know, every, every first lead order, how much do you have that, you know, let's go over this and trying to just, you know, almost insert yourself as much as you can so that they feel like they have somebody every step of the way. So how important is zoom to your business? It's, it's, um, it's imperative. So as we've, as we've been able to grow, we, you know, when I, and again, when I started, we didn't, we didn't do any live dials that I saw. Mm-hmm. And so, you I know, think my, I was the only one that was doing live dials on Facebook live. Right. Exactly. You know what so, I mean? like, yep. And, and not a lot of people were picking it up. So for us, um, you know, and like I said, for me, it was fine. I went to the office in Arizona when my very first day, Clay Sweet was there. Clay was like, Hey, pick up the phone and start dialing. And I was like, right now, you know, like even I was, even though I was, I was going to do it, I was still a little bit uncomfortable. So brand new agents sitting in their house at home, not getting to an office, not, they are, are 80% of the time, not going to pick up the phone unless someone is there with them to say, Hey, let's do it together. So we're on zoom. You know, we probably have 50, 60 people on zoom today um, as well of let's unmute ourselves cameras on so that, you know, and then, and then you can hear everybody. I can hear you get hung up on. I can hear you book an appointment. I can go with that objection works. Hey, I need you to unmute yourself on your first day, second day, third day, so that I can give you constructive criticism. Cause the reality is if I can't hear you dial the phone, I actually can't help you with it at all. Cause I don't know what's going on. You might tell me something is completely different. I'm, you know, I'm, they, they said they didn't fill it out and really they didn't say that and you didn't overcome the objection. So I think that zoom dials and, and being able to hear everybody and get everybody on there has been imperative. And also it, it lets you know what agents are serious, right? If I tell mm-hmm. you get on Zoom dials and you never, ever get on, well, then I know that you're probably never going to be someone that plugs into the system, which means I'm not going to pour my heart and soul into you. So it's That's also true. give and take, give you a task. Will you get on with me? You know, same thing today. We're in Dallas. Will you come to a physical location and dial with us? We've got a dial contest going on. If you'll do those things, I realize you want it a little bit more than maybe somebody who's going to sit at their house and not do it. Gotcha. Now you said something a while ago that I kind of want to hit on, and that is, you said that that you want to help empower people, not, not, not enable them. Like, where is that breaking point with new agents? Yeah. So, so I think uh, that comes back to the give and take, right? So what I, what I got really, really bad at, and this is what I've changed. And I think that, you know, has been good for our growth. And what I've changed is I used to be like a very, very hand holder. Like I would enable everybody. I would do everything. I would straight up somebody like I couldn't buy leads. I'll be like, I'll get them for you. Like I was pouring like my heart and soul to the point where it was detrimental to my business into new agents to people who really honestly didn't want it. Right. So it was all give on my part. Right. So that's enabling like you're like, they don't even want it. You're giving them something they don't even want. Right. So now I think empowering comes from that give and take. So I will do this for you. I will get on zoom and dial with you, but you need to get your first lead order. Right. Or, Hey, maybe you're struggling for budget. Here's the deal. If you get on and you buy 250 leads, I'm going to get on and dial with you. And then if for whatever reason you burn through those leads, I'll get you 50 more, but you better be on with your camera because then I can coach you. Right. Versus like, Hey, I'll just get you this. I'll do that. That's enabling or same thing. When, when, when someone would ask me a question, cause I'm also kind of a control freak. So when someone would ask me a question, I would just do it for them. Like, they'd be like, where do I find my writing number? And I'd be like, let me go grab it. And I would get their mutual Omaha writing number and I would send it to them. Now I'm like, go on your back office and find your writing number. Call me when you have it. Right. So there's enabling and there's empowering, show them how to do it on their own. Right. Same with like even recruiting calls. Someone like, I don't know how to recruit someone. I'd be like, send me their number. I'll recruit them for you. Right. That doesn't help anybody. That doesn't show them how to go forward. So now we've shifted to let's get on the phone three-way call. So that way you can hear how I do it. And then going forward, you're going to do that on your own, but they, they have to have some skin in the game. So they physically have to come somewhere. They have to be on live dials um, and showing that they want it. I think that being a very present manager and a present, um, you know, agency owner, whatever, a present upline, whatever you want to call yourself is empowering versus doing everything for them and trying to shove it down their throat. That's just enabling them to never be independent. So how are you setting up the expectation for all of this stuff? And when do you, when do you set that expectation 
Um, can you kind of go through that? Because, I mean, it's got to be pretty early. By I can just tell by the way that you're assertive that you probably put it in very early and you're setting very, very structured expectation of what you expect out of them and what, what they expect out of you. Am I correct on that? Yeah. So, and I, and I try to, um, you know, I try to ask a lot of questions right from the beginning when we hire them. So, right. When you're first starting to grow, it, it's, it was always quantity, right? Like I just want, I would hire everybody. Like if someone was like, Hey, I don't really want to do this. I'd be like, no big deal. Let me send you the study material. Right. Like straight up you're, you're trying to get everybody in the door versus then I realized like we got to hire more, more quantity people. So what I started doing is recruiting zooms as well. So I kind of start setting the, the expectations right from the beginning. So if I talk to you this week and you agree, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is cool. I'm going to, I'm going to get studying. I'm going to get going on Wednesday, every single a week I'm on a zoom with every single person that's been plugged into class that week right also that weeds people out of like who's going to show up who's not then straight from there I'm setting the expectation now not necessarily that you know you're going to be on live dials every Monday and Thursday but straight out of the gate I'm setting the expectation that like here's where my time is going to go right can you get your exam done in two weeks and usually all that stuff is going to follow through so if someone's going to get their exam done within you know a week to, to 10 days then that's going to follow through the contracting process right if they're going to get that stuff done quick versus someone who's going to sit and studying for four months so right from the get-go i've tried to implement setting those expectations you know here's the time frame that you should do it in here's here's what's going to happen once you get this once you get this pass you're going to talk to this person for your contracting you need to get that contracting in within 24 hours if you can't get that contracting in within 24 hours and then i think usually by the time they get through all that stuff when it comes down to the live dialing and i need you to get your leads and let's do this together they're usually pretty good but mm -hmm. we we started doing it straight up from the studying phase versus we used to do it like you know, once they got contracted and they'd sit in contracting for six years, then, then yeah. they're not, they've already, you haven't set good expectations from when you gave them the study material. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And, and as far as that zoom call goes that you have with them every Wednesday, is that just to go over and track people's progress in the, in the, in the uh, pre-licensing or what, what does that consist of? Yeah. So, and, and a lot of it too, is it is to track their progress, but also just to introduce yourself. So okay. what people, when, when people want to work with you, this is what I realized. So I have a, I don't have a recruiter, but I have somebody in my office. Her name is Kayla who helps send them all the study material, get them through the gate, things like that. But the reality is when someone reaches out to you and they want to work with you, they're looking for a leader and a mentor that's going to be there for them. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to connect with them on a different level. So we'll get on a zoom. It's very open, just like this. And it'll, and it'll be like, I'll tell my story. You know, this is how long I've been here. This is what I thought, you know, how are you guys, you know, what's up with your family? If anyone wants to introduce themselves, you know, here, I would just want to let you know that I'm here for you. So first of all, just planting the seed that if that I'm here for you directly, right. I don't expect you to always, you know, people don't want to deal with staff all the time. They don't want to always talk to Kayla in my office that Kayla, Kayla's great, but she's not an agent. So when I want them to know that, First and foremost, they can always reach out to me. I am here for them, um, you know, and, and I've heard a lot of a lot of stuff that I don't I heard. Um, I talked to recruit not too long ago and they were like, I tried to get on the phone with the agency owner. He's a great dude. Like a, actually a lot of his sales experience is gonna be a killer. He said, I've talked to a lot of people at FFL. I tried to get on the phone with the agency owner and they told me I the agency owner will not talk to you until you have your license. Well, guess what, dude? Now that guy's on my team. Because I got on the phone with him. I said, hey, how's it going? What's up with your family? How bad do you need this? What's going on? Tell me about your experience. And he's like, you know what? I felt like you actually genuinely cared about me versus the guy who said, I'll never speak to somebody who's unlicensed. So just really trying to build that connection is the first and foremost thing. Um, ask questions about their family, get to know who they are. And then from there, you know, here's what the study, what the study process is going to look at. Now, I know Kayla sent it over to you in an email, but here's what it's going to look like. The test is going to be, you know, you're going to have this many questions on this study, this, this is what you're going to have to know, you know, get this going, get it done as fast as you can. If you need help scheduling, I need it scheduled in 24 hours, but here's Kayla. So it's more of a verbal, right? When you send them mm -hmm. 10,000 emails, they're reading the emails, but that's not that it's not that serious for them. So they get the emails and then I'm on face to face like this, talking to them. Got it. Got it. I like that. Um, so where, where do you think that new, that, that brand new people are running into the biggest problems? Um, as a brand new yeah. Whenever, whenever they're just getting started, I mean, like, is, do you find that people are afraid of phone or they're, you know what I mean? They're afraid to ask uncomfortable questions. Like, like, where are you seeing that people, people are kind of struggling whenever they're first coming into this? Yeah. So I think one, they are, they are afraid to ask questions. They're afraid to get uncomfortable. 
you right. So a lot of guys is we have to realize is it. And if you're a new agent or a newer agent on this call, you might have felt this before is that like when you, with the presence that we have on social media, when you come in, right, like as a new agent, it can be, you think, you know, you know, Paige has been here two years. She sold, you know, hundreds of thousands of maybe even millions of dollars of insurance. They feel like Paige is this person that's like, I don't really know if, if she's here to help me because she's such a, she's a big agency owner. Right. So that's the first and foremost, I think they're uncomfortable to ask questions because we do FFL is a great presence about it. Right. Like you look at Grady, what he's built, what he's done. Are they going to come in and be, and feel comfortable asking Grady? They think he's like a God. Right. So I think Ooh. first thing is bringing down to their level because new agents feel uncomfortable understanding that they feel uncomfortable. And then also the second mistake that they make is, is I think not plugging into the system. Like I said, it's, it's different. We're working with a bigger variety of people. People have different backgrounds that they make the mistake of thinking because we promote it so well as being independent. We're very independent. We run our own business. You have autonomy over your business. You can make your schedule. All that stuff is true, but it is very, very hard to be successful if you don't plug in. So I think a lot of people come and they think I'm, I'm a business owner. I'm a part, I'm, you know, I'm a business owner. I do this part time. I make my own schedule. And that's, and I made that mistake as a new agent. I was like, dude, I make my own schedule. Like I'm going to the gym at 12 PM now. Yeah. Like I'm going to wake <laughs> up at 10. I'm going to the gym at 12 PM when I first started. Right. Like I was like, I can do whatever I want. Right. So it wasn't till, and I, and I know that from experience. So I was moving into with my little sister, right. When I started this and I would call my, my manager and I'd be like, dude, I dialed all day. Like nobody answered. And then one day my sister's like, she hears me on the phone and she's like, you didn't dial all day, dude. She's like, you went to the gym at 12 PM. And <laughs> then, and then like you thought, because you're a big bad business owner, then you went to get groceries. And then after you got the groceries, you were on FaceTime with your friend for like an hour. So you didn't, you didn't, you didn't <laughs> dial all day. So then I realized that a lot of new agents do that, right? They think that being a business owner and is this and this and that is that I can dial whenever I want and they don't really set a time, the hours to plug in. So that's the expectation. I, said, I know I said you could, I know when I recruited you, I said, this is very independent. You can dial whenever you want. The reality is you can dial whenever you want, but if you don't dial from eight to eight today, you're going to struggle. So trying to knock that out as, as soon as I can, but I think a lot of agents still get that, right? Like I even have people in Dallas today that they've been on my team for six months. I'm like, I never, I and mean, you guys hardly ever write anything, but I had an in-person event today and you're able to come. So how do I, how do I get that to transition from when I'm not here physically, can you please get on live dials and do it yourself? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got to have something to plug into because like you said, groceries, folding laundry, like whenever I was at my house before I got at the point, I mean, before I got started getting offices, I mean, I would do, like, I don't do laundry, right? So, like, whenever I was single, I lived out of laundry baskets. I found myself folding laundry, you know what I mean? But yeah. So I didn't have to get on the phone, yep. you know, watching commercials, like, yeah. into it. You, you know yeah. what I mean? So I so would do, like, switch. all the administrative work ever. I'm like, I need to yeah. check my emails. I'm like, I don't even have any emails, but I'm checking them. <laughs> Every 10 minutes, like, oh, yeah. do I death one? You know, I, I get it. I get it. You know, and I think that's that's the power of Zoom and the power of people feeling like they're a part of something, you know, even if they're, mm -hmm. you know, because we're all spread out all across the country. But 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 if you can make it to where they feel like they're part of the team, then they're more li liable to do what what they're supposed to be doing. Right. To be, to, yep. so, from accountability. Um, let's talk about social media. Cause I mean, you are an absolute beast on social media. Um, do you, are you hiring, first off, are you hiring anywhere outside of social media or is that your main, your main avenue to get people in? Yeah. So first off, I don't know if you want to get me started on this. Cause I'll go all day on social media. <laughs> like my favorite thing. So I the answer is that's that. Why I, that's why I kind of saved it for, I wanted to get out all the other stuff. That I, I know that's it. what I'm saying. This, this better be the last <laughs> one. Cause I'll be here till Tuesday. Um, yeah. So social, social media is where we, where I, I hire in my staff hires a hundred percent of our recruits. So okay. we have tried, um, you know, and I've, I've heard a ton of it. So I started really strong in social media and then I got cold feet because everyone was saying, well, you got to try other things. You got to try other things. You got to try other things. And, uh, so I, I put money into zip. I put, I mean, um, yeah, I put money into zip. I put money into indeed. And even like some, some active campaign stuff to generate agent leads I did it for about four or five months. And I'm just straight up like, I, this is not my thing. I am a, just not a cold market recruiter. I wasn't, we weren't converting them. And so I was like, you know what? I'm sticking to what I know. So we just did a, a very recent, probably two months ago, a, a, my, my staff and I went through everything. And we said, let's go through every agent contracted through cold market and every agent contracted through social media. 
99% social media. So we're now everything is social media. That's where we get a hundred percent of our recruiting on social media in some form. So whether that's my personal Instagram, uh, we run some ads, we run our own ads on Facebook. Um, what I realized guys about the, about the cold market and why I love social media so much is that a lot of the cold market that we invest money into, um, you know, those people are, are looking for jobs literally, right. They're on, mm -hmm. they're on indeed because they need a new opportunity. So that's fantastic. That's great for them. We want to help those people. My market honestly is the people who don't know they need a new opportunity yet. Like I was. So the thing for me is that I was not looking for a job. I was not planning on leaving my job. I was not in a place where I was like, this sucks, you know, whatever. I actually like my job. I just worked too much and didn't make as much as I wanted to, but, but I actually loved what I was doing. So I would never have been the person on a ZipRecruiter ad or an Indeed ad. I just wouldn't have found me there. I didn't even have LinkedIn at the time because I was never going to put my information out there. So for, for me guys, social media has millions and millions of people on it. It allows you to market to everybody, not just the people who are looking for jobs. And at the end of the day, guys, this isn't a job. So when you're marketing and running ads, in my opinion, to people who are looking for a job, you're marketing not the right thing because this isn't a job. This is for business owners. This is for self-employed. This is for people who are ready to work on only commission. So social media, I think, um, allows you to better present your message um, and I think you convert more because also you can drip, right? So a lot of social media is the drip factor. And so the people that I recruit on social media, they've been watching my stuff 30, 60, 90 days, right? Well, if I'm not running a specific zip ad for 30, 60, 90 days that they keep seeing, right? And those, you know, so for me, for, for me, social media is the game. I think, um, you know, I get a little crazy about it. And I get a little passionate. And I even do this with my own team is that if you're, if you don't do it. So here's the, here's the realization that I had to come to. If you don't do it, somebody else is going to. Yeah. So everyone is going to come to FFL. Everybody is going to do this. So if it's not going to be with you, it's going to be with me or it's going to be with Nina. It's going to be with Nina D or it's going to be with Alondra, right? Who hammers social media. So yeah. my realization was not like, I love social media so much. It was like, if I don't do this, these guys are going to, they're going to kick my butt because they're going to market in a way that I'm not marketing. Got it. I see questions in the chat. You want me to answer those? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at them right now. Um, so do you have fun on your page? Um, is it all, is it like your life and business or is it just all business or, you know, like he's asking if you, uh, so do you have fun on your, on your social media posts? Or is it just all business or is it, is it part personal part? Because, because like nobody wants to see just all business, right? Right. They, but what we're selling is a lifestyle, not just, Hey, this is insurance sales. Right. Cause like yeah. who wants to do that? Right. So it's a, it's a mix of both. And so here's the thing. My personal page has a mix of both. Now I definitely do not post anything, everything, even though it might be fun is generally still geared towards business, right? Towards business or what I do or, or the lifestyle, right? I would never, I would never post at this point in, in where we're at. I wouldn't, I would never, and, and this show hopefully doesn't offend anybody. I wouldn't post you know, on a boat in the middle of an ocean in my bikini, like, oh my goodness, we have a great lifestyle, right? Because you have a great lifestyle, but you're not doing anything in, in that moment to better yourself, right? Okay. Yeah. The other thing is you never want to post something that's unattainable. Okay. So people are actually not motivated by pictures of yachts and planes because that seems so far away mm -hmm. that they can't get there. What they are motivated by is the fact that you can work out every morning because you have the time freedom. What they are motivated by is that on Sundays, you can have brunch with your sister, right? Um, or you can, you can go to your kid's soccer game. They are motivated by that. They are mo motivated on things that are not so high level that it's just like, this just looks like a get rich quick thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're like, oh, come sell insurance, I'm on a yacht every Saturday. They're like, that's, it's too far away, right? You're not, you're not anywhere in the middle, okay? So even though I do post personal stuff, I still try to keep it marketable, right? To everybody and very much at least growth oriented, right? We're doing productive things. Okay. Um, so I try to do that. So here's the deal. My social is for most of my stuff, right? The people that want to work with you want to work with you. So a lot of that is, you know, I'm a business owner, promote what I do, things like that. And your business page 
is your credibility. That would be your FFL domination. Okay. If you're posting all your stuff from your business page, they are never going to watch that. And they're never going to respond to your messages. Cause so you're hold just, on, hold on. I got a question about that. So whenever you say, if you're posting everything to your business page, is, are you saying that you shouldn't be posting everything from your business page to your personal page? Correct. So they should be two different accounts. So you are a person and your business is a business. Okay. okay. So like when you post, like I just did this with Brent Abernathy the other day, his was everything FFL Gulf, Gulf Coast. No one knows what that is, right? No, literally no one has any idea. So no one's going to naturally just seek out FFL Gulf Coast and look at everything. They're not going to. What they're going to seek out is Brent Abernathy, right? Or they're going to look at different hashtags. They're going to look up entrepreneur. They're going to look up, you know, baseball. If you play with this, they're going to look up athlete. They're going to look up life insurance sales. And that should draw them to your page. Okay. People want to work with people that they relate to. Then they go to your page and they're like, oh, Marissa says she's a business owner, but what does she own? Right. Then they go to my business page, FFL domination. It's the credibility behind who you are. But at the end of the day, this business is about relationships. So the mm -hmm. people who want to work with you, the people who want to work with Nina and Hayden, they want to work with Nina and Hayden because they saw Nina and Hayden on social media, not because they saw FFL limitless, 152,000 families protected. They don't even know what that means. So if you only have a business page right now and it says 15 families protected, nobody has any idea what you're talking about. You have to market in a way that is going to draw them in in some other way. Okay, here's the other thing. So there's four, that I, I, Grady always talks about, there's four pain points. I don't know what they are, but a lot of them, so it's money, fun, I believe, um, time freedom or something, and then like family or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay, so not everyone's pain point is money. Okay. So what social media allows you to do is promote to all four or five of those things, right? So I can work out with my family in the morning, whatever it is, that's time freedom. Okay. I can take a weekend. If I need to do this, that's time freedom money. Also, we make a lot of that. Okay. Also then there's, then there's the fact that you have your family or whatever it is, um, or that you have fun. Okay. Or that you have culture, right? So, or mm -hmm. that you're making an impact. So we get to protect a lot of families. Okay. So we actually protect families when they pass away, we have their death benefit. That's a big deal to people. Okay. So some people love what they're doing and they make a lot of money. Okay. Or, or whatever it is, they never get to have fun or they don't have any time freedom. Some people love the impact that they're making, but they don't make any money. Okay. Some people make a ton of money, but they hate what they're doing. So you have to promote to all those different things and find out what their pain point is by showing your lifestyle. So when you go on your, your Instagram page and it's just big sale, family protected, new agent, blah, blah, blah. That's not hitting any of those pain points that people have. You're trying to relate to their life, right? So mm -hmm that's what your personal page does is it promotes you as a person to connect with other people and your business page gives you credibility. And that's where you recognize other people. That's where you recognize your team. So then when they go to your business page and you see, well, you know, a, a, Athena did this and Paige did this and Marissa did that. Then there, then you see all these other people that did it and they're all in the business. Then they see the recognition for everybody. And then it's more people being successful. Right. And that's on, and that's on your personal page that you're hyping other people up. Like, Some, it's, yeah, it's, sometimes. It's Okay. Sometimes, but most of the team recognition is on the business page. On the business. So what page. you're trying to do, right? So you're okay. trying to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's people, where I've really, that's where I've really, really sucked. Like I just got an Instagram because, like, I'm old. I guess is what everybody tells me. You know, they're like, Zach, you old. You ain't got no Instagram. You old with your ID. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're talking about, bro. You know, like I'm just learning how to do that. Luckily, Jamie Cheerio's coming, coming, moving here to uh, to Greenville. He's gonna be working in my office. Well, he will help you because he's a gang. Yeah, that's what. That, yeah, he told me. I was like, dude, I don't know how to market myself, bro. Like, I don't know what I'm doing on Instagram. Like, I take pictures of me in the gym every morning at five thirty. But in the gym, yeah. like, don't. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. know what else to do. You know, yeah, you know, like take pictures of my kids and dogs. I don't know. Hey, that's you know? good though. People with kids and dogs and go to the gym, they'll relate to you. So that's a start. So yeah. I think what, what you're trying to do is, is get people to be, to be inspired by you, but also want to work with you. Right. So the mm -hmm. other thing that you can do on social media that I think is really important is to basically, um, is, is like headhunt people. Right. So I'll go, um, you know, the reality is there's a big movement right now to be your own business owner. Okay. There's a mm -hmm. big movement to be an entrepreneur. Even if you're, even if you're a lady, there's a big movement to be a, a women in business, whatever it would be. So there's a, there's a lot of people out there also who are selling something that are not making any money. 
Okay. But they are already entrepreneurs. So those are the people that you want to target. Right. So what I'll do is every single day, I'll go on and look up some hashtag of, of whatever it might be, like whether it's entrepreneur, it might be solar, right? I've been getting a ton of people from solar sales. Solar Ooh. sales are very seasonal. Okay. So their season is coming to an end. Okay. I have six of them here right now today. Okay. So Gosh. Solar, cars, anything like that. All these people already know how to work hard. So I'll go find those hashtags. I'll go find profiles and I'll just follow them and like their stuff. Okay. I'm not Who's necessarily that? cold messaging them. I'm just liking their stuff, you know, following them, hoping that they'll follow me back so that you can start the drip. Okay. okay. The other thing that's really important with that guys is consistency. I was about to ask you about that. Want to see consistency. If you're not going to do it every way, if you're not going to do it every day, don't do it. Because what happens is you'll lose people. If you get somebody interested on Monday and then they now they follow you and they come back to look at your stuff Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you're not posting, it, it makes you look like an it makes you look like an inconsistent leader, right? Well, maybe she only works on Monday. Okay. They want to work with people who actually work really hard and they want to work with people who are very consistent. And what happens is a lot of people reach out to you because they're literally tired of seeing you post. So they're like, Marissa, you post every single day. Like it's a lot. I had to reach out and find out what this is about because you're so annoying. That's a good thing. I'm like, sounds good. I was so consistent that like you were forced to, right? The last thing I ever wanted to happen was for someone to learn about FFL through my page. Then on some day, I didn't promote it good enough or I didn't talk about it. And then they go find Nina's page, right? Right. And that happens sometimes. I'll have people that are like, oh, I originally like I, I, I saw this guy in Chicago at a grand opening and he's like, oh, my goodness, you're actually the person who introduced me to FFL. And I was like, really? And I was like, well, how do you end up on somebody else's team then? Right. And he's like, I can't remember. I think I looked at your page, but then I fell in the loophole and I went to someone else's page and I ended up on Ivan V's team. OK, so so same thing, guys, like the last thing you want, you need to have your stuff be so good that they don't need to look at anybody else's once they see yours. OK, and that has to be consistency. That has to be every day. And I would I would write those things in your in your to do list. So like my to do list will literally say post content, make a reel, post a reel, go like 50 profiles, go find 50 profiles, just like I would dial. Right. You so 50 keep, profiles is what is is how many touches on on random people that you're doing a day. Yep. And then I'm yeah, 50 or just waiting. And then I'm just waiting for them to follow me back 50. I usually don't send a lot of cold messages. I I. I wait for them to message me, which happens a lot. So I get a lot more incoming messages because I'm starting the drip. So all I'm trying to do is get them, get them to follow me back. And then they'll usually message me. Okay. The other exactly. thing is also, also the thing that I find is also being kind of unavailable, right? So a lot of other agencies, which I'm, I tried this and that's totally cool. If you do that, we'll send a message. Hey, I see you're in solar sales. What do you think about 120% commission selling insurance? Dude, you sound like a robot. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not interested at all. They just, they just, they're not, they don't care. If you sent me that message, I'd be like, dude, get out of my inbox. Okay. Versus they follow you. And now they're like, oh, I'm kind of watching. They're kind of watching. They're kind of watching. Then they send me a message. Hey, Marissa, how do you get paid? I'm literally like, this is how we get paid. Nothing else. I don't even message them after that. This is how we get paid. I'm not like, this is how we get paid. Are you interested? I'm like, this is how yeah. we get paid. Right. Like I'm almost too busy. You don't, not just everyone gets to work. Not just everyone gets to work with me. Then they'll send me another message. Well, can you explain how this works? Yeah, this is how this works. Cool. Sounds yeah. good. Have a good day. Then they'll send me another message. Oh, you know, it looks like you're killing it. What got you into the life insurance industry? Then I'm like, Hey dude, why don't we jump on a call? Okay. Yeah. But I'm making it so available. Like, Hey, we have commission started at 120%. The reality is that's not, they don't care, but if they want it and they've reached out to you a couple of times, they're mm -hmm. probably going to be a more solid recruit. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like, like th that approach right there is a lot more, is a lot better than for example, everybody that's on here, that's on any kind of social media, you've been reached out to by the guys who were who were, who were down mining for the uh, for the side. I mean, the for uh, yes, yep. God, yeah. money, how many of stops. those have you responded to? Yeah, you haven't responded to any of them. You so know, the other like, thing like, that's why whenever they message me, I'm like, how can I help you? Because I know that it, I know as soon as they, hey, how's it going? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, dude, like, I don't know. You're you. like, I'm not getting anything. Exactly. So I'll yeah. just go follow them, like their stuff. I might react to a story or I might just say something like, hey, girl, looks like you're crushing it. Love connecting with other business owners. Hope you have a great week. No pressure. She'll be, she'll message back and be like, wow, that was so nice of you. Like, right. You know, thanks for the follow, whatever it was. So very chill. But here's the other thing, guys, is, is you, you know, like I said, you have to be consistent and also make your page have like spice it up. Right. So I, I used to be very, very against it. I would be like, I'm never going to buy followers. I'm never going to boost my page. I would never do that. That's so fake. So let me tell you a story. 
I went to, when I was at convention last year, I wanted to get my makeup done. Okay. And I was like, shoot, it's so last minute. I messaged this girl. I went to her. I looked up, I looked up hashtag Miami makeup artist. That's how I found the service I was going to use. So imagine if someone's looking up hashtag life insurance agent and you're not on there. Okay. So we do this all the time. You do it for car detailing. You use it for whatever you're looking up. That's exactly how you find your businesses. So I looked up hashtag Miami makeup artist. Okay. I, um, I went to, uh, I went to this girl's page. She had 52,000 followers. She had very good content and she, um, you know, but I was like, dude, she's got to be booked up. Cause she's that good. Right. Like I'm like, there's no way I message her. I send her this long, desperate message. I'm like, can you please do my makeup? I know it's last minute. Da, 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 da. If you, if there's any way that you can, I'll literally pay you triple. I told her that. <laughs> I literally pay you triple because like you have so much and she's like she messaged me back and she's like hey I think I can do it girl like sounds good she's like it's for all three days I'm like yeah she's like okay cool you know obviously we agreed on the triple price she's like sounds good I can be there so she gets there she's doing my makeup she's very very good and I go I'm so surprised that you could get me in because like I know how busy and good you are you have so many followers you have such a good social media pre- pre- presence there's no I didn't think there was any chance and she goes girl that's the point she goes, I have a social media presence that makes me look like I'm the queen of makeup, even though I'm not. Okay. So she, so, so she said that she goes to my profile and she's like, you need to boost it. You need to get followers. You need to post better content. You need to be on it every day so that when people go to your profile, whether or not, you know, you do what you say you're doing, you better look like you do. So Got what it. that does is that gives you credibility. I have 70, I have 80,000 followers on Instagram. They're obviously not all real 80,000 people that went to my page and wanted to follow me. I paid, I, it's in just like an investment in your business. When you invest in ZipRecruiter, when you invest in Craigslist, you, I invested in my Instagram profile to make me look more credible. Someone is yep. bound, is going to look at my page and see 80,000 followers. She must know what she's talking about versus your page with 300 followers. They're going to reach out to me over you. Because they think I'm more credible based on how many other people are watching my stuff. It's the same with reviews. When you go to a restaurant and you're looking at two different restaurants, which one do you go to? The one with the most stars reviewed by the most people. Just like the Rose reviews are fake as well. So you have to get also out of your head about this, like this, if you have any ego about that. Like at first I was like, I'm never going to be fake and get followers. Now I'm like, dude, I'll get as many followers as possible because it makes me look more credible to the naked eye right? They don't know. They're like, if she has 80,000 followers, she must know what she's talking about. They reach out to me. Okay. So that's, that's a way that, you know, you can join marketing campaigns. You can join a giveaway campaign. You can use a company. I know like even, um, Sean Grady, Andrew, they use that insurance branding, insurance marketing branding. I've used that, um, company to boost my profile a lot. Um, someone asked me how much time I spend on social media. Um, to be honest, guys, it's not that much more time than you're already spending on social media. It's just now your social media is for business. It's not for personal. So yeah. every night before you go to bed, I guarantee every single one of you scrolls on Instagram, TikTok, Instagram, or, or, or Facebook. Okay. Because some of, some of us are more Facebook users. You're scrolling on those for probably 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm doing the same thing, 45 minutes to an hour, but instead I'm doing 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm on it with a mission. Who am I going to find? Who am I going to follow? What am I going to post? Right. And so same thing when I said, like, put that stuff into your calendar, when you're going to post what you're going to do and have that planned out, you have to be so serious about it that just like you would not, not dial on a Monday. Like you'd never wake up on a Monday and be like, I'm not going to dial today. Right. Like I got other stuff going on, like dialing. We talk about that dialing, buying leads, going to your appointments. Okay. That's how our schedule is on Sunday. You buy leads Monday, you dial them. Same thing. You would never not do any of that stuff. So you would never not do your social media stuff. You have to put that in there. So on my to-do list, it might be like, buy my leads, send this to my admin, do this, you know, get these groceries, follow 50 profiles, post this reel. My social media girl will message me and she'll be like, dude, you need to make a video. Like, what are you doing? So that stuff, you it has to be just as important as everything you're doing with sales. Gotcha. How many, how many posts are you doing a day? Um, so I don't have like a super number. I'll usually not have less than, I probably won't have less than five on my story. And also is switch that up too. So when you, when you start getting into like the engagement stuff, right? So what you'll notice is some days it's really good to blast it out there. And some days it's good to pull back, right? So what you'll notice is if you always have 15 stories on your story, people are going to click through them. They're not going to watch them. But if one day you have 10 and the next day you only have two. Okay. And also making yourself like what you would like to watch, right? So if I go to your profile and it says, family protected, family protected, family protected. I'm not watching after the second one. Okay. So you're not going to post 10 of those in a row. You're not going to post 10 of those in a row. 
So you're going to post, um, you know, maybe somebody protected a family, then we're all dialing here. Then um, I went to Starbucks and got a coffee because I'm basic and I post a picture of my coffee. And then I post a funny meme, right? Or like a funny video. Then I might post a reel. Then I post a picture, right? So it's like picture, video, words. So it's it's engaging, right? If it's picture, video, words, they're going to watch all that stuff. If it's the same picture over and over again, or picture, 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 or 75 people that protected a family, no one's going to watch it. So what I try to do is I try to go to, uh, what I try to post is what I would watch. So if you go to someone's story and you're like, this is boring, then don't do that, right? Do the opposite. So if you go see what other people are posting, you're like, I only watched the first two stories when they had 10. Well, then you shouldn't post the same 10 stories that they did, right? So, yeah. you, you know, and same thing when you post those graphics all the time, you know, and I, and I try not to post about um, things that people wouldn't know about, like as a, as a regular civilian, like I would never post a lead discount on my story. Because who's yeah. going to know what that is, yeah. right? I only post stuff that a person who is not in insurance might understand. Got it. Do you do like motivational stuff too? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do some quotes. I'll do some, you know, some quotes. No, like, there's a lot of good reels out there. Like yep. I, I like most of those. Just, I mean, I like of, watching them, you know? Exactly. A lot of good reels. And what the thing is, guys, reels are not necessarily for you to, to necessarily get a bunch of recruits. They're just for you to get on the explore page. So like my reels are most often not about work at all. They're just like funny, dumb, like voiceovers that I did. But what, when you post on your page, it goes to your followers. So if you only have 300 people, 300 people are seeing that. When you post a reel, it goes to the explore page and hundreds of thousands of millions of people can look at it. So the point of a reel is just to get your page seen, just to get out there in front of millions of people. Whereas when you post on your page, that's just for your followers that you already have. So how are you going to market to followers you don't already have? That's through reels. And that stuff is a lot of funny stuff, right? So you're not going to attract people to your profile by saying, hey guys, I sell life insurance. Come join me. That's not going to work. But if you post a funny reel and that gets them to come to your profile because you posted something funny about being an entrepreneur or dialing, right? That's why some of my stuff, I won't even say, like I posted one and it was like dialing on your first day and it was really funny and I got a response, but I didn't say dialing life insurance on your first day. Dialing can be for sales of all different types, solar dials, real estate dials, a bunch of different people dial. So when I post dialing on your first day, I got a lot of interaction from other people in sales forces that don't have anything to do with life insurance. And they're like, yeah, that happens to me all the time. Now I've connected with real estate agents. I've connected with people in solar. I've connected with people in pest control, right? Um, and so, and all that is, is it, it can be funny and stupid and you might not recruit one person on it, but it's just going to get people to come to your page. Got it. How much are you spending a month on, on social media? Um, I probably, so we do a lot of that stuff on my personal Instagram and then we do run Facebook ads. Um, and we probably spend anywhere from, mm, I want to, I think our cap is five grand. Okay. Gotcha. So, so, and, and sometimes we do it. And what we do guys is honestly, a lot of that too, is what's going to happen is, is, is you're going to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. So mm -hmm. not every ad is going to perform and that's okay. There's no right answer. I put ads up for three days and they don't work. So I pull them down. Right. Then we put them up and they, they kill it for two weeks. And we're like, dude, let's just leave them up and see how long they keep doing good. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, is we post ads with words. We run video ads. So I'll run a, a, a video saying, you know, selfie video. That's like, Hey, my name's Marissa. I've been in life insurance industry for this long. This is what it's been able to do for my family. You know, if you, if you're, you know, kind of grinding your gears right now, don't really know what's going on, but like very relatable. I'm never trying to talk. Like I know more than anybody or like I'm this super smart person. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I want them to realize the average person can do this. So, hey, guys, if you're kind of grinding your gears and you're looking for a new opportunity before 2022 ends, I'm looking to mentor 10 people this month. Um, you know, send me a message, blah, 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 blah. And we run an ad on that. So we basically run a boost. Those would be those things. When you see those videos that say sponsored, that's essentially mm -hmm. what we're doing. So we run yeah. those um, on our business page and then we'll run some on my personal page and then we'll do some word ones too. So, you know, we've changed the wording around. So I've had ones that I've like, I was like, dude, this ad's awesome. This is going to perform so good. And you put it on there and it doesn't. And the ones that you think aren't going to do good, do really good. So try a bunch of different stuff, right? Try different wording. We did better when we, um, we changed instead of like, you know, part-time, full-time, this and this and that, we changed to join our free three-week program right? Like a lot of trade schools do, or those commercials that say our program for three weeks is free. What do you get with the program, right? Training, personal training videos do that a lot. So we change that to our, our, you know, you get the coursework, this and this and that, that ad performs really well for us. Join our program. People want to know what the program is. Well, here's what we do. So you can try them if they work great, if not pull them down and then the budget is daily. So, you know, we might be like, this one's going to do really good. Maybe we'll spend 
you know, up to a thousand dollars on this one ad because it's doing so well. And then other ads, I, I spent five bucks on it and I'm like, dude, this sucks. It's not getting anything. I'm pulling it down, you know, so it's going to be very different. So some months we only, we do really well with, you know, two, three grand as a whole agency. And sometimes we, we have to bump it up if things aren't performing. Awesome. Awesome. I really do appreciate your time, honey. Like this has been, I got a whole page full of notes. This is awesome. Um, if you want to leave the guys with something, what would you have, what would, if you could go back day one and know what you know now, what would you have done different? Um, I think in, in all aspects, it would, it would be a mindset thing for me. So I think guys is that, um, you know, believe bigger, faster. And I know we've heard that before, but a lot of times when we're just getting started or we're going through the ups and downs, you're going to have months where your agency grows. You're going to have months where it doesn't like it's the name of the game. You're going to have days where you sell, you know, every single client that you sit with and you're going to have three days where you, where you go, you know, fat zeros, that's going to happen in everything that you do. Um, I think my, my biggest thing is I would have believed that I could do it quicker. Right. So don't look at, you know, the Grady's, the Nina's, you know, anybody who's grown really fast and done really well and think like, oh, that's just for them. Or, oh, they had this, or, oh, they had that. Like you can literally do that. You can be on this call right now and you can do what they've done in the next 12 months, which was so crazy. I didn't grasp that right away, but if you don't quit and like, you just keep trying things. Right. So like the worst thing you can do is nothing. So if you're like, I don't want to start on the social media just because it's scary, just start somewhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to go from I'm on this call today. And then tomorrow you're all of a sudden have all this stuff. Like it's going to take some time to build up. That's totally okay. Just don't do nothing. And when you look at the people around you, you have to truly, truly believe that you can have those things. And you have to believe that right now. So I think that's what I would have changed. I think when I, when I came in, I was like, this is really cool. I can probably do good. I'm usually pretty good at believing in myself, but I still had some, some thing in the back of my mind that was like, "Mm, maybe that's just for them. Like it's not guys. It's for all of us. It's for you. It's for you on the sales side. It's for you on, on the building side, like whatever it is, it's, it's crazy how fast this vehicle can take off if you just stay consistent in everything you do. So I think believe in yourself, understand that like you're on this call for a reason, you know, you've been, you've been brought here for a reason. And it wasn't, it wasn't to just get by, like it was to do what Grady's done. It was to do what Nina's done. If that's what you want and just believe that like, that's there for you, your hands as well. Awesome. I appreciate you so much for, for taking time out of your busy schedule to pour into us. Um, This has been great guys implement the stuff that she's talking about, you know, like, I mean, I've got a thing full of notes right here. And like, as soon as I get off this call, I'm going to be be putting stuff in motion and you, you'll you see me on Instagram. I'm going to be an Instagram sensation before it's all said and done. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. I believe that. I believe that. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. And, and, and I appreciate it, guys. And we're all one big team. So anything I can do to help, I'm serious. You guys can reach out to me directly. Absolutely. Thank you so much, honey. Yeah. So guys, today is Thursday. We all start at zero today for a reason. It doesn't matter how good, how bad last week was. That's last week. Let's get back on the phones. Let's crush it. Let's go help as many families this week as we can. Let's serve, serve, serve. If y'all need us, y'all holler at us again. Marissa, thanks so much. We appreciate you, honey. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. All right. Bye.